Section 5.1 is composite function. I would pause the video and write down these notes. So the way we denote a composite function is either this notation here or f of g of x. We read it as f composed with g. Notice this open circle, it's not multiplication, it's a composition. And then this down here talks about the domain. The domain is all the x's in the domain of g, such that g of x is in the domain of f. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Basically, it means it's the domain of the inside function and domain of the final function combined. Here we're given two functions, f of x and g of x, and we want to find the composite f composed with g and its domain. So this, again, notation means f composed with g. Usually, I always write it as f of g of x because that's actually telling you what you're going to do. You're going to take the function 1 over x plus 5 and plug it in every time you see an x in f of x. So f of x was 2x squared minus 3, so when I saw an x, I replaced it with 1 over x plus 5, and now I'm going to simplify it. So f composed with g of x is 2 over x plus 5 quantity squared minus 3. So now we want to find the domain. The way that we find the domain of the composite function is first we find the domain of the inside function, so the domain of g in this case. G is a rational function, you can't have zeros in the denominator, so our domain is that x cannot equal negative 5. Then we look at our final function that we just found, and we find the domain of that function. Again, this is a rational function, and its restriction is also x cannot equal negative 5. So for this one, our domains are the same. The domain of the inside function and the domain of the final function are the same. When you go to find the actual domain of the composite, it's the most restrictive possibility. So you combine these two to create the most restrictions. In this case, it's the same thing, so your domain is just that x cannot equal negative 5. So domain of the inside function, domain of the final function, take the most restrictive possibility. So x such that x cannot equal negative 5. Now what I want you to do is pause the video and find g composed with f of x, so g of f of x. So instead of taking g of x and sticking it into f, you're going to take f of x and put it into g. So go ahead and pause the video, find that and its domain. So g of f of x, every time I saw an x in g of x, I replaced it with the entire function 2x squared minus 3. So I got 1 over 2x squared minus 3 plus 5. And that simplifies down to 1 over 2x squared plus 2. So that's your g of f of x. For the domain, we need to find the domain of the inside function, which is f of x. f of x is just a parabola, so its domain is all real numbers. And then we need to find the domain of the final function, so 1 over 2x squared plus 2. It's a rational function, which means the denominator cannot equal 0. You end up with x squared equals negative 1, or can't equal negative 1. We're only worried about the real numbers. This is impossible, so our domain of that is all real numbers. So our final domain is take the most restrictive possibility. Both of these are just all real numbers, so our domain of the final function is all real numbers. Sometimes they can be a little bit trickier, especially when you get into rational functions. So we have a new f of x and g of x, which are both rational functions, and we want to find f composed with g of x and its domain. So what you're going to do is you're going to pause the video, find f composed with g and its domain. Make sure that you simplify it all the way down to one rational function. So f composed of g of x means f of g of x. Every time I see an x in f, I'm going to replace it with the whole function 4 over x minus 1. So you end up with 4 over x minus 1 divided by 4 over x minus 1 plus 2. To simplify this denominator, you need to make a common denominator. So I multiply this by an x minus 1 over an x minus 1. So now your denominator becomes 4 plus 2x minus 2 over x minus 1. Make sure you distribute that 2. So if you simplify this, you get 4 over x minus 1 divided by 2x plus 2 over x minus 1. Whenever you have a fraction divided by a fraction and their denominators are the same, those denominators will cancel. If you keep flip change, one ends up being in the denominator, one ends up being in the numerator, so they cancel off. So you end up with 4 over 2x plus 2. So this is your composite function f composed with g. So now when you want to do the domain, domain of the inside function, that's g of x. g of x is a rational function, so that x cannot equal 1. And then domain of your final function. Again, it's a rational function, so the denominator cannot equal 0. And once you 
solve that, you end up with x cannot equal negative 1. So to find the final domain, you take the most restrictive possibility, which means that x cannot equal plus or minus 1. So go ahead and try it one more time with g composed of f of x. Find the co composition and its domain. So g composed with f of x, so you end up with 4 over x over x plus 2 minus 1. When you simplify that with a common denominator, this denominator gets shot up into the numerator if you keep flip change. So you end up with negative 2x minus 4. Domain, domain of the inside function is x cannot equal negative 2. Domain of the final function, that's just a line, that's all real numbers. So most restrictive is x cannot equal negative 2. So when you're doing a composite, you replace every x in the outside function with the entire inside function and simplify it as far as possible. And then domain, you find the domain of the inside function, domain of the final function, and take the most restrictive possibility.